Hi, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, and today I'd like to show you uh, a couple of new electric sailplanes from ChocoFly, and um, they are designed for basically F5J or ALES in, in the States. Um, now, they're not necessarily um, brand new models because they're essentially identical to uh, a model range called the Kappa, which um, has been sold for a few years now. Um, so essentially what ChocoFly does is they uh, contract with the manufacturer to supply them um, their own brand of models with, with new paint schemes. But essentially um, these models are identical to the Kappa. So they're called the Onyx, the Onyx line of models. Um, there's a 3.5 a 2.5 meter and a 2 meter um, wingspans um, and they're also offered in different laminations so you can get uh, glass uh, wing skins, all, all carbon wing skins and I believe there's a, uh, a D-Box carbon and glass uh, variant and the, uh, obviously the carbon would be, all carbon wing would be the most expensive model um, and I have the 3.5 meter and a 2 meter here today. I don't have any 2.5 meters in stock because that was relatively new when I ordered these airplanes. So I'll give you a close look at some of, some of the parts and show you some of the, the cool features of the airplanes. Um, generally, um, the Kappa is uh, purpose, purposely designed for F5J, so it's not a F3J sailplane that's been lightened or modified. Uh, for F5J or, or for electric flight. Um, the Onyx, this is a center panel for uh, the 3.5 meter Onyx and this one is actually the uh, glass version. It does have some carbon reinforcement along the spar and in the middle of the center panel. Um, as you can see it's it's pretty narrow um, so it's, it's, it's a high aspect ratio model and um, that's one of the reasons um, that the weights are pretty low on these models is because it's just they don't they don't have the wing area. The construction is pretty standard, so there's nothing really revolutionary about the construction. It's your typical uh, molded construction, um, composite skin with row cell foam um, sandwiched between the layers. So there's the center center panel. The, the way the, the wing intersects the fuselage is pretty cool. It's got kind of a different sort of mating system for the, um, the, the connectors for the wing to the fuse, and I'll show you that in detail. Um, servo bays, they provide you the covers. They're already pre-chimmed, and they fit the, uh, the bays very nicely. That's the center panel. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's no horn protruding um, on the flaps. They have a really uh, unique... Um, control horn that's carbon and it's pre-installed so that's really nice. Uh, here's the wing tip for the 3.5. Pretty, pretty standard and re one really nice feature is they put the aileron servo w uh, really close in towards the root and I guess that would be to try to keep the weight down as much as possible towards the, towards the tip which would probably um, contribute to the good handling characteristics of this airplane. The wing joiner is round, it's not square. Um, it's got molded uh, wipers for the, all the control surfaces on the wing. So it's the 3.5 center panel and tip. And the fuselage is really nice. You can see the molds are uh, top and bottom. They're not seamed. Uh, they're not seamed on the top of the fuselage. They're, it's seamed on the side of the fuselage which um, I think allows them to make some uh, of the details on the top of the, of the fuselage here so they can pull the molds apart. Um, and it looks like they only paint the top half of, the, of the, the mold for the fuse. But it looks nice. It's got a pretty big canopy. Um, the hold down's carbon. It's already installed. Uh, it's not 2.4 friendly. That's no big deal. And it sort of has a molded in... Um, firewall so you don't have to glue a firewall in there which is nice um, but if you wanted to cut this back maybe for CG you'd have to glue you'd have to cut it and make your own firewall and it's got sort of a raised I don't know if you can see it's like a pointy um, 
on the top surface of the fuse here on the nose, it's, it's, it's like triangulated. And I think they do that to allow you to run your wires from your motor um, up on the top edge of the fuselage and get clearance between the wires and the motor if you're running a uh, outrunner motor and you, you know there's always problems mounting those outrunner motors and trying to get the wires not to drag on the on the motor so that's nice pretty roomy in here um, tail tail just bolts on uh, horizontal and then the vertical goes on top of that and the through bolts hold everything together and they give you this cool little carbon cone to cap it off back here. So that's the fuselage. Push rods for the fuselage are provided. You have to install them yourself, which is kind of different because most models nowadays have these pre-installed. So you do have to install these yourself and they're simply just steel, thin steel push rods. This is kind of nice because you could swap these out for like etched Teflon tubing and carbon rod and probably save a good amount of weight. Okay, let's move on to the uh, fuselage, the fuselage pod for the uh, two meter model. And if you were getting a 2.5, it's identical. So uh, basically the same. The only difference between the 2.5 and the two is the, the wing is stretched. I think it's the same tails, the same pod. It might have a longer boom, I don't know. But this is a pod and boom design. Um, so you do have to glue the, the, the boom on, which is right here. Fits pretty good. It's tight, so you don't have to really worry about alignment. Uh, looks like it's wrapped. It's a wrapped boom, and the surface is, is a little bit... It's, it, it looks like it's definitely wrapped from the outside with like shrink tubing or some kind of plastic. So you can feel the layers of carbon in there. But it, you know, it still looks nice, and it's light. It's very stiff. Um, the hatch for this pod is under the wing on the bottom of the fuselage, which, which is strange. Um, so getting your gear or your motor up here might be a little bit of a chore. You can see that um, the same as with the bigger fuselage, the motor mount's molded in and it has some bolt patterns molded in there too, which I guess you could use if you're using the, the motor that they molded it in for, but um, you might have to uh, make mark your own holes and, and drill your own holes for your motor mount. And again, it's got that same sort of um, protrusion on the top surface here to allow you to route the wires if you have an outrunner motor. Round um, joiner, like the 3.5 tips, straight joiner. Um, push rods are provided. And man, this isn't really 2.4 friendly either. It's really strong though. This, this fuselage is really strong. So that's nice. Um, they give you the same sort of push rods for this as they do the bigger airplane steel push rods. Um, I don't, I don't have them here. Okay, let's move on to the tail. This is the horizontal for the 3.5. And initially, I thought these were machine solid core um, foam tails, but feeling them now, they, they don't, they're not solid core, so they're just. Um, conventional construction with Rosell on a fiberglass skin. A lot of carbon on the um, trailing edge along the hinge. Maybe that's for stiffness. Carbon in the center. And again, uh, this just uses the two bolts in the tail to hold both the vertical and the horizontal together. And they give you a brass um, piece of tubing for a control horn. So that's the horizontal tail. Uh, tape gap seal. Uh, which is nice. They did a good job with that. It goes under the skin. And the vertical. The vertical is much the same. Same exact construction as the horizontal. Uh, you can see the bolts here for mounting. And the, again, the control horn on this is just a piece of brass tubing that's bent and they pre-drilled the hole for you. And the um, same thing with the gap seal. It's, uh, it's tape. Not a big rudder, you know. It's it's not um, it's 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 a tall vertical, but the rudder is uh, fairly narrow. It's sort of not what we're seeing uh, lately. Usually, you see these big, huge rudders like on a Perfection or or a Maxa or something. But it's very nice quality. Again, carbon on the trailing edge, uh, glass up here, very stiff. They're, they're, these are stiff parts. They're not fragile at all. That the the tail pieces. Two point five. Or the 2 meter and 2.5, I guess, uh, tail pieces. These are pretty light. These are machined uh, solid core. 
and uh, some carbon reinforcing, carbon trailing edge, tape gap seal, which is nice, and they mount the same way, two, two through bolts to hold everything together. Here's the rudder, which is really tiny, looks like a little shark fin. Kevlar hinge, you can see there, a little tiny gap seal with tape. So that's cool. Getting back to the fuselage here on the, on the bigger model, um, it's pretty stiff. It's not, I wouldn't consider this fragile um, compared to a lot of the other F5J models I've seen out there. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the stiffness of this fuselage. And it's got a pretty uh, big diameter boom, which might aid with uh, some of the side loads. So I don't think you'd have to worry too much about landing this fairly hard, although you wouldn't want to dork it in like an like a F3J model because you could break it. Um, they give you some pieces and things for the servo tray or like the servo box, and I'll show you that in, in greater detail. Let's see if we can move along to the uh, two meter wing tip or wing, I guess, because there, there's no center panel. So here is the two meter wing, and it's identical, it's the same thing as the 3.5 wing tip, except it's got two control surfaces, and as you can see, it's got the um, extra bay for the flap. So it's got an aileron bay and a flap bay. So they must have a different bottom mold for these to make these. But again, uh, molded control surfaces are molded wipers. And they have the really neat sort of LDS style carbon um, control horns and, uh, and rods in here that are pre-installed. So that's really nice. It'll help, help with the building process. Flaps are bottom hinged on this. And the aileron is top hinged, but it's not the protruding style control horn like 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 you see on like a stork or something like that. It's still got a very clean uh, uh, same control horn as the flap, so it's un totally totally under the skin, which is really nice. And this happens to be the pro, so this is the all carbon wing, and this this feels fairly light. So weights on these models, uh, the 3.5 Onyx, um, whether it's glass or all carbon, flying weight's about the same. They're a little under 1,300 grams, so they're going to be probably in the 44 to 45 ounce range ready to fly, depending on gear. I think if you use the etch tubing for push rods and carbon rods, you can, you know, really small servos, you could probably get this thing down to the 42 range, which is pretty light for a model of this size. The two meter model is around 21 to 22 ounces, depending on on your installation, what motor and batteries and everything else you use. So there's a, a kind of a general look at these models, and um, I'll show you some close-up details.